question to me. The reason you received Jesus as your Savior is because he was a pure person with no sin and died for your sins. Because the Bible clearly says the wages of sin is death. It says from dust you are to dust you will return. When I die, I've paid my wage for my sin with my own death. I didn't accept Jesus, so I don't get to go on to beyond. But I paid my wage according to the Bible you believe in. It doesn't say the wages of sin is death and suffering. It says the wages of sin is death, period. No, not at all. I'm a logical, I'm a logical individual. I'm an atheist, sir, but I read your book 11 times. Which book? The Bible. I've studied religion, nine different ones. I understand that, but it doesn't say when you die, you go on to judgment with God. Where does it say that? Hebrews, it's appointed a man once to die and after this the judgment. God gave you a conscience for a reason, so you know right from wrong, so you'll be without excuse on judgment day. And as an atheist, you do believe the scientific impossibility that nothing created everything. That's insane. It's hard for me to believe in a Bible that tells me when I die, I paid my wage. And if I want to go on to heaven or whatever there is, I need to accept Jesus' death because that means he paid my wage. No, you didn't pay wage. The wage is death. That's what you get paid. You don't pay right. Jesus is dying without sin pays my wage, that's why you receive no, Jesus. that's called universalism. When everybody's saved, Hitler's saved, everyone's saved. No, Hitler's going to stand before God and pay for what he did. God's going to give him justice, and he'll give you justice. That's why you need to repent and trust in Christ. Why does it dust you are to dust you will return? Because you're going to be resurrected. Why Everybody that dies dust goes back to dust. dust. You will return doesn't say you're going to be Okay, resurrected. listen to what Jesus said. He says there's a resurrection of the just and the unjust. You will stand before God in your flesh. You're going to be resurrected. You're going to stand before a holy creator and every idle word you've spoken, you give an account thereof. Right. Whoever looks upon a woman to lust for her has committed adultery already in his heart. Have you looked at women with lust? Let me tell you how bad I am, sir. I was a private investigator for 35 years. I found missing children, runaways and throwaways. I brought home and raised 43 teenagers whose kids whose parents didn't want them. I'm a terrible person. That's right. God's going to make me burn in hell forever. Okay, try that in the court of law. Okay, I robbed a bank and I shot a guy. I didn't rob a man. bank. Let me make my point. It's very important, sir. What's your name? My name is Steve. Steve, just listen for a moment. If I stand in front of a judge and I've committed a serious crime and say, Judge, I want to tell you how good I am. I help old ladies across the road. I get money in Red Cross. He's not going to take good works into account. He judges me by the crime and the crime only. And when you stand before God, it doesn't matter what you've done. If you've given away all your money, if you've built gates and given away billions, it will not buy everlasting life. That comes only by God's mercy, Steve. That's why you need a savior. Your good works can't wash away what your sins. What everlasting death? What causes that? It's not everlasting death. Everlasting burning in your hell, sir. Well, time will be withdrawn. I don't know exactly what that means, but God will see to it that people get justice. And that's a fearful thing to fall into God's hands. So your loving God gives justice by having people suffer for eternity. He's going Wonderful dead. loving He's, God. Well, what should happen to Hitler? What do you think? He's dead. He's over with. Oh, that's so, what should okay. Have this shows what you think of six million Jews. He will never, no, no, what? sir. He and will then, never see hey, Steve, heaven. let me finish my point. There are 11 million people he slaughtered. Horribly, uh -huh, okay? Uh -huh. And you say this is his punishment. Bam! The all wages over. of sin is death. Yes, sir, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's only God. So that's you're what the saying, Bible says. God is unjust. God will see to it. Hitler stands before him, and he'll get exactly what's coming to him. And that's not one quick bullet to the head. That's not punishment. That's getting out of a problem. No, the punishment is not having whatever the good is on the other side. Well, here's of your problem, it's the Steve. Bad. Sir, it's the bad. let me talk to Steve. Steve, you're guilty of what's called idolatry. You have a wrong concept of God's nature and his character. You think God couldn't care about justice, and truth, and righteousness. If you've got a good grip of what he's like, then you begin to fear him and think about your own sins. And you see your need of a savior. The Bible says, judge not that thou may not be judged with the same judgment ten times over. But you are standing there judging me, telling me what I'm guilty of. Well, let's find out. So could you leave alone? Steve, have you lied? Of course. Have you stolen? Yeah. Have you blasphemed God's name? Of course. Ever looked at women with lust? Of course. Had sex out of marriage? Yes. So listen, I'm not judging you. This is what you said. You're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating 
uh, adult red hot. Right. Now, I'm not judging you, but God sees your sins. And I'm saying, Steve, you need a savior. You need to be washed of your sins. And that's what God can do by his grace, not by a good works. I, but because I he's thoroughly merciful. understand that, sir. But I know when I die, I'm not going to burn in hell because the Bible doesn't tell me. I mean, Revelations, it says, and an angel came down from heaven and reported to God what the men on earth were doing. And God was displeased. And a second angel came down from heaven and reported to God what Satan and his demons were doing. And God was appalled and sickened and cast them into the lake of fire, the second death, the pit of hell. That is what, when it talks about hell. Our wage is death. If we accept Jesus' death, we don't have to pay our wage. Steve, was Jesus lying when he said this? Now listen to what he said. If your eye causes you to sin, knock it out and cast it from you. For it is better into heaven without an eye than go to hell with both your eyes, where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. Then he said this, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you, for it is better into heaven without a hand than have both hands to go to hell where the fire is never quenched and the worm never dies. That's speaking of a literal punishment for sin. Out of mind, but yet you're no, judging. it doesn't say that. It says your brother's eye. Jesus is talking to Christians judging one another. He said, when you judge, use righteous judgment. I have a right as a Christian to say what Hitler did was morally wrong. That's a judgment. That's not wrong. But it's wrong for me to say to another Christian, don't eat meat, don't do this, don't do that. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, judge not. Take the plank out of your eye before you try and take a speck out of your brother's eye. That's a Christian, not the world. But see, that's what, oh, so you can treat the world however you want, but your fellow Christian, you got to treat them with Well, you treat the world with love, but we don't want every man that you might present every man homeless. Steve, I care about you. I love you. I don't want you to end up in hell. That's why I'm talking to you. I wasn't screaming like this, man. I have read the Bible over and over again, trying to find what you're talking about. I have not been able to find it. I've read You've read it 11 books. times? I, yes, I've read the Gutenberg Bible at the Huntington Library with the Hebrew and Greek. Okay, now, do you know how to find, you know how to get nothing out of the Bible? This is all you have to do. Read it with a proud heart. Read it with a condescending arrogance. Well, I was seeking what it had okay, to offer. Okay, so God's lying or you're lying, because this is what God says. If you search me with all your heart, you will surely find me. So search for me some more, because God will grant you everlasting life as a free gift. I've been searching all my life. I haven't found You haven't yet. had all your life. you still got some to go, Steve, so... Not very much, but I... Yeah, same here. So just search from with all your heart. I just... I need to see it physically. I need to touch it. I need to smell it and taste it to believe it. Okay, do you it. want evidence for God's existence? Are you going to tell me about the building again? No, I'm going to give you something better. Okay. But you just got to let me talk for a minute. Go ahead. Okay. Steve, could you believe a book with full color pictures, with page numbers in sequential order, and sentences that are coherent could make itself? Could a book make itself from nothing? Is it impossible? Yes. It's outside of the realm of possibility, okay? What is DNA? It's a book. Science called it the book of life. It's full of coherent information, instructions on how to make an eye, how to make skin, hair, blood, personality. Everything was in your DNA from the moment you were conceived. So what would you think of the mentality of someone who thought a physical book could make itself? That'd be mentally unstable, okay? What do you think of the mentality? What do you think of the mentality of someone who believed DNA made itself? An atheist. Insanity, that's what atheism is. DNA. The book of life with those instructions and coherent information. I can't go as far as atheists. I'm more of an agnostic. Okay, so you're not an There's atheist anymore. There's a power out there. So now you're searching for God. He promises you'll find him if you search for him with a humble heart. And so I just, I just plead with you, Steve, open the Gospel of John. So the Gospel of John would be milk. And if you read that with a humble heart, you'll be like Lou Wallace, General Lou Wallace. Do you know who he was? No. He wrote the book Ben-Hur. And so he started reading the New Testament after two years. He dropped to his knees and cried out to Jesus Christ, my Lord and my God, and went on to write Ben Hur. And so if you come to God with a humble heart, he says, I'll not cast you out. He's able to say to the uttermost, them that come to God by him.